So we know that Labour were notified this afternoon by the Gambling Commission that they were launching a formal investigation because of a bet that Labour candidate Kevin Craig placed on the election. Now, of course, we know of 10 people who are being investigated by the Gambling Commission, we think because of the election date. This is not that. He did not put a bet, as far as we know, on the election date. Instead, we understand, and look, I have put in a call to his office, an email to him, we haven't mm -hmm. spoken to him yet. We understand that instead of putting a, date, uh, a bet on the election date, he instead put a bet against himself winning in his constituency. <laughs> now, to be fair to him, the majority is almost 24,000 to the Tories. It's a very safe Tory seat. But yes, he basically bet against himself and the Gambling Commission have decided that that warrants a formal investigation, so Labour suspended him immediately. Do we know what the rules are on political candidates betting on themselves either to win or against themselves at any election? So my understanding was that in, in British politics, you are allowed to bet. But yep. obviously the gambling, I mean, you know, this isn't insider trading. He has no more information than we do, perhaps a bit more because he's on the doors. But this is not sort of, this doesn't seem to contravene the gambling act. But the, obviously the Gambling Commission know more than I do. Yes, it would because it's quite hard in the first instance to think how it would be cheating because he can't tell the outcome of the election any more than I can or you can even looking at all the polls or speaking to people on the doorstep. Mm, no, no, but... Just, I mean, it, with that kind of size of majority, you wonder whether it was a safe-ish bet, but there's still a risk to it, I guess, is the point. But there's, nevertheless, he's under investigation. Nevertheless, he's under investigation and Labour would point to the fact that, you know, this their speedy action as opposed to the dithering of the Tories. But yes, I mean, he obviously didn't back himself if he was betting against himself after having done some door knocking and decided that actually he at least you know if he lost at least he'd win some money but yeah i, I mean absolutely extraordinary I don't, I, I don't know why i'm laughing i shouldn't be laughing it's serious but i mean it's just a farce isn't it this whole thing, this whole election campaign has been quite decidedly farcical yeah it has i mean it was interesting someone said to me last week someone that used to work in number 10 said to me they wondered how big this thing went yeah, whether it yeah. was just people had been betting on things like what was going to come up in the budget and they said everyone of every party has actually been doing this for years and I if bet. this starts unraveling then this could be a massive scandal I, I don't think it's going to be far off that. Let's see. Aggie, thank you very much indeed. LBC's political co correspondent, Aggie Chambray. James is in Gillingham in Dorset. Hi, James. Hi there, Tom. Um, yeah, I was just... Uh, well, firstly, I'm disgusted by this whole gambling thing and I can't wait to get rid of these clans, you know. Why? Because um, everyone just... else says it's a non-story. It, well, it, 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 it's just another addition to the catalogue, isn't it, of, of sleaze and corruption and just what we're used to, I guess. I think everyone's just becoming used to it now. And um, But I just had a particular point, and it was really in response to what the gentleman before all your ad breaks and your little interview there mm -hmm. was saying about Angela Rayner. I, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm absolutely fed up of it being compared to Angela Rayner. She, I'm not a massive fan of Angela Rayner. I don't support Labour. It's a completely different scenario. She, she was investigated because James Daly, Tory MP or cabinet mm -hmm. minister, I think he's an MP, um, put a complaint in or whatever mm -hmm. expression mm -hmm. one would use. So subsequently, as a result of that, it, the, the, it was raised again and she was investigated. She would have originally, I think, been cleared by HMRC. I'm pretty certain she had been. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think because an MP has brought a complaint up, but and 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 so it, 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 that is why why she was investigated. But I guess guys, but I guess Lee's point is, Keir Starmer said that people should be suspended if they're being investigated by the police. He did actually say that about Boris Johnson when Boris Johnson was being investigated by police. If he was truly believed in what he said, he would have had to suspend Angela Rayner while she was being investigated by the police. OK, but it's on. But I think it's I think what, what I'm saying is I think people are putting it on the same sort of in the same scenario or same level. It, it just it, it isn't. I mean, I think I think he, he's sort of saying that and putting Angela Rayner in the same bracket as these guys who are admitted. That, I can't remember the gentleman's name, the um, Tory yep. MP, yep. a cabinet minister, Can whatever, Can advisor. Yep. Um, he's admitted it. So, I mean, it, it, it's sort of, you know, it, it's there for all to see. But I think there is this sort of underlying thing. It's try, desperately trying to get gotchas on the other side when all this chaos is going on, you know. And I think there's more to come out. I really do. I think it's just going to 
I think it's a can of worms that's just going <laughs> to be get well, bigger and bigger. To, I'll put this to you, James, from Vicky. We've all got a huge dose of scandal fatigue, Tom. Yeah. Do you think that makes sense? Yeah, I do. I, I'm, I mean, I think because it's not because I, I, I'm excusing it uh, in any way. I just, I, I, every day I wake up and think, what are, the, what are these idiots are going to have got up to next, you know? And, and I think someone compares it to an iceberg. You see the tip of the iceberg and that's what you see underneath, which is probably a thousand times bigger, the stuff you don't see. Well, I do, know. listen, James, I, I said it the other day, but I'll say it again. Um, and as I mentioned with David Davis earlier, we sat in the cabinet meeting where cabinet ministers were told that there was going to be a general election happening in 2017. I was made aware that a general election was definitely going to happen 24 hours or so, a bit more than 24 hours or so before it was announced by the prime minister. Or we were called into Downing Street. It was a bank holiday Monday. We knew something was up, but maybe it was going to be an announcement of war or something god awful. And we were sat, in, uh, sat down in the prime minister's office and told she's going to call an election the next day. And at no stage did I ever think, right, I can make a fast buck here, I'm going to go to the bookies and put a bet on, or I'm going to tip off some mates in the city or whatever who could move some markets, I don't know, and make some money that way and get a kickback. At no stage was that ever a thought that crossed my mind. Hand on heart, genuinely, maybe I'm too naive for it. Maybe I should have done. But I, I do wonder whether it goes on a fair bit more than, than these instants of it uh, currently show. Particularly, and I don't want to get conspiratorial, but particularly uh, risky is the lead up to a budget. There are very strict rules around what can and, can and cannot be said in the run up to a budget. It's why budgets in theory are not supposed to leak before the chance of the day stands up and delivers it because you have the capacity then to move markets. If you were working on the budget many months in advance and you knew some of the ideas that were going to be prepared for it, you could make quite a lot of money. And I just wonder. Lauren's a new caller in Bristol. Hi, Lauren. Oh, hi there. Um, my husband and I have just been driving from London um, for like the last hour and a half. We've been listening to this um, gambling scandal. And we're just wondering, well, what is the, what's the point in this conversation? There's so many things that you could be bringing to your audience that are topics that we want to know about with the general election, election coming up. And you're kind of wasting a lot of airspace with this this gam gambling thing when i mean I, I don't i don't care my husband definitely doesn't care um but i don't i don't know how many people do really care about it why don't you care about it well people gamble we're all people what i want to know from politicians is what they're actually going to do yes, uh, to change our lives you know, I, I, I know that Lauren, but you you know the difference between gambling and insider trading well, yes, but it's, it's gone on and it's happened. Why do we have to hear about it all over the news? Like, nothing that, that anybody says on this programme is going to change how that's dealt with or, or what's going to happen next, really, is it? Why can't we discuss topics about how politicians are going to change our day-to-day -day lives? in terms of our education system, our NHS, well, we have, um, I mean, your VAT, things yes. like that. And you do speak about it, but yes. this has been given so much airtime when there is nothing that we can do to change it. Do you think, finally, that it speaks to either the character of the people who are alleged to have made those bets or, indeed, the characters of the leaders who make decisions about what to do about those alleged to have made those bets? Um... They're probably the candidates themselves and they should be dealt with separately and I don't think that it should be constantly all over the media when the general public has to try and make a really huge decision and this is all that we are we're getting bombarded our ears our brains are getting bombarded by this nonsense really nonsense um, well yeah it, it yes it, it has happened and yes it should be dealt with internally does it need to be, does it need to be, yeah, just spread across media when really people should be thinking, actually, what am I going to vote for? How am I going to vote? How is that going to change my life? How is that yeah. going to change yeah. people's lives around me? Rather yeah. than, oh, has this politician made a quick buck off of an election? It's, I don't know. It just feels non-important. OK, Lauren, interesting. I like the perspective. I'm grateful to you for it.